And Shalom, I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is the brother Abadia from the GMS Houston camp, and I'm back at you with another video. Now, I'm here on this um, site, uh, History off the uh, Google and I was you know looking for a particular well I was looking for a topic for a lesson and I was you know went into the scriptures and I came across a couple of verses that I'm gonna bring out I'm gonna bring them out after I go into this information I'm gonna uh, you know use this information about sharecropping and then you know filter it through the through the scriptures man it's fucking devil the so-called white man who is Esau according to the scriptures he has a lot to pay for you know and he will pay so I'm not going to go into all of this um, I'm going to read I'm going to jump around okay I read some of this so I'm going to jump around so sharecropping because especially for younger brothers unless they've researched it you, you know you may not know what sharecropping is so uh, sharecropping is a type of farming in which families rent small plots of land from a landowner in return for a portion of their crop to be given to the landowner at the end of each year. Uh, different types of sharecropping have been practiced worldwide for uh, centuries. All uh, right. I must, well, let me read all of it. Let me read all of it. It says, but in the rural South, it was typically practiced, practiced by former enslaved people, which they're going to be calling us blacks and African, African Americans in this uh, article. But this is uh, with the Israelites, you know, this is the tribe of Judah. It says, uh, with the Southern economy in disarray after the ab uh, uh, abolition or abolish uh your yeah, abolition or abolish abolish basically abolishing the uh slavery and the uh devastation of the civil war sharecropping enabled white landowners to reestablish a labor force while giving freed black people a mean of substance a substance a sustenance However, the system severely restricted the economy mobility of the laborers, leading to conflict during the Reconstruction era. Okay. And it goes into, I'm not going to read it, but you can, I'll, I'll post this in the uh, description box. But it goes into how they were supposed to, you know, Esau was supposed to give us a, 40 acres in a mule. It was. And it never happened. So uh, I'm just going to read this. Uh, I'm going to read this rise of sharecropping system. And I'm going to read this King Cotton dethrone. And, uh, and I'm going to hit the scriptures. It says rise of sharecropping system. It says despite giving African Americans. Judites. In other words. The right, the rights of citizens, the federal government, and the republic-controlled state government form during the uh, phase of Reconstruction took little concrete action to help free black people in the quest to own their own land. Right, you would think after, but you know this is what the devil is supposed to do. A devil is supposed to beat you down, cheat you, mistreat you. Okay, if you would think how much this, you know, this man pushes, you know, uh, equality, push the notion of equality and uh, the land of the free, home of the brave, all this bull, all these bullshit, all this bullshit this man pushes 
when he gets up and when he spews out his his words and his speeches that something like this could have never uh, happened. You think after we didn't got our asses handed to us, beat, robbed, uh, murdered, raped, molested, every negative thing you could possibly think of that, you know, we were so-called freed, right, through the great Abraham Lincoln, right? Which he had slaves. There wasn't nothing great, great about him. A great fucking devil. You know? That they would have had something set up to where we could own our own land and not have to jump through fucking hoops to, to do so. But let's read on. It says, instead of receiving wages for, for working an owner's land and having to submit to supervision and harsh discipline, most free for, uh, freemen prefer to rent land as a fixed payment. It says, by the early 1870s, the system known as sharecropping had become dominate, uh, dominate agriculture across the cotton planting south. Under this system, black families would rent small plots of, of land or shares to work themselves. In return, they would give a portion of their crop to the landowner at the end of each year. So let's read this. I believe I'm going to stop right here. Yeah, that's, this is it. That's actually it. It's cotton, cotton, King Cotton Dethrone. Subtitle of this article. It's a, or one of the subtitles of this article. It said the sharecropping system also locked much of the South into a reliance on cotton just at the time when the price of cotton was plunging. In addition, while sharecropping gave African Americans uh, auto, none, uh, how do you say this word? Auto, num, nummy, uh, no me. No, I'm saying it wrong. Salakia. Certain words for me is hard to pronounce. Autonomy in their daily uh, work and social life and freed them from the gang labor system that had dominated during the slavery, slavery era. It often resulted in sharecroppers owing more to the landowner. Now, how is that? They already poor. You don't have much. So they were working the land as a uh, payment. And then after at the end of the year, they would give uh, a portion of the crop to the, the landowner. You would think, how do you come, how do you end up in debt after something like this? After already being poor, barely making it, barely having enough to, to survive. Now you is now you in debt, but this is what you get when you deal with the devil. Okay, it says um, it said it often resulted in sharecroppers owing more to the landowner for the use of tools. These fucking devils charging us to use tools. And other supplies, for example, then they were able to, uh, for example, then they were able to repay. Just like today, Esau puts you in situations to where we are already poor, you know, and he puts you in situations that drive you further in debt or drives you into debt. Now, if you're poor, how the fuck you going to get out of debt? All right. It says some black people managed to acquire enough money to move from sharecropping to renting and, and or owning land by the end of the 1860s. But many more went into debt and were forced by poverty or the threat of violence to sign under unfair and exploitative sharecropping or labor contracts that left them little hope 
of improving their situation. Now look at this fucking devil. We so a lot more more Jakes have to sign these unfair contracts, okay? Which drove which were, uh, drove them further into poverty and into debt. Now let's fast forward up to today, working these these jobs, and you work for minimum wage. Now the cost of living is at a certain. Cost of living is, is is so high, right? And you work in these jobs. You work in, in, in and by the way, working hard, mighty hard. And then you work, you put in all this labor, these labor hours, then they underpay you. Then expect you to go out here and 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 make a make a living. Or pay the cost to live. How does that work? It doesn't work. You end up poor and uh, uh, in debt. Let's get these scriptures. This is Proverbs 22 and 22. It says, rob not the poor because he is afflicted. And Esau know he can do that because it's easy to take advantage of a poor person. When you ain't got shit, you, you would damn near willing to take anything just to survive. And, and Esau... Don't give a shit. He'll capitalize on the on off the poor. He don't he doesn't care. It says because he is uh yeah, rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. And Esau not only robbed the poor, but then he adds affliction on top of it. What kind of people would do this? The devil. You poor, then they'll rob you. They'll take from the poor. Ain't that something? And then on top of that, they will oppress. They will bring hardships into your life. And if you live in this God-forsaken so-called country, and you're a Jake, you know all about, we know all about oppression. Okay? Give us, for an example... Give us uh, um, low paying jobs that can not really take care of a family and then allow drugs to come into the community and then lock niggas, so-called uh, Negroes up for selling drugs. That's called oppression. Not to justify selling drugs. And ultimately, the Most High, you know, for us breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, the Most High gave us into Esau's hands to for Esau just to have his fucking way with us. But this bastard is going to pay. Let's read the next verse. It says, Proverbs 22 and 23, For the Lord will plea their cause. Yeah, the Lord is going to plea our cause. And spoil the souls of those that spoiled them. That's why you got a lot of Edomites catching hell right now. But it's going to, the ultimate way the Most High is going to plead our cause is we're going to get payback. You devils are going into slavery, starting with the elite banking families. And you're going to be brutally tortured and killed, not murdered, killed, justifiable killings. Okay, as payback for all the wicked shit that you've done to us. And I'm going to end the video right there. Lord willing, this video was edifying until the next one. Shalom.